So will we just go ahead? Yeah. So welcome everybody and thanks for joining in today and thanks again to Joe for agreeing to deliver the seminar. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Maria O'Reilly, the EdTech in Engineering and Architecture. And today Joe is going to bring us, well he always brings us updates, but I think today you're going to specifically talk about Claude, ChatGPT and Google and where they're going. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, we've got some uh, some pretty pretty new news about all three of those. So I'm just going to take you through what's happened in the last few days. Yeah, and just before we get going, it's just to to advise everybody that the seminar will be recorded and or is being recorded right now, and I'll share it with you in in the coming within the coming week, let's say. Um, so I'll just hand over to Joe. And thanks, Joe. Right. Nice to be back. Um, I think this is our sixth seminar, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, yeah, fantastic. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I mean, you know, it, you, you. I think most of you have been before. Um, if you haven't, welcome. Um, and there are recordings of the previous seminars if, if you're interested, um, and you can get those off Maraid. Um, so, uh, oh, everybody's turned the camera off. This is miserable. That's like I'm talking to a blank wall. Um Makes it very difficult from my my end if, if everybody turns their cameras off. Um, but uh, the 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 aim of today is to is to kind of just give everybody an update on where we're at with with AI, particularly in the education space. Um, oh, James was changing his shirt. Right. Well, fair enough. You could turn your camera off if you were <laughs> doing that. No worries. Um, but yeah, just just give everybody an update on what's happening in the education space. Um, I mean, questions, comments, you know, discussion, as always, welcome. Um, this shouldn't be me talking all the time. Um, so we'll just have a little canter through and, and see how long it takes. Um, if we finish early, then we'll finish early. Um, but otherwise, we'll 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 plan to run till two. Um, and then uh, I don't know whether we'll do another one of these or not. I haven't, haven't really um, talked about that with Maraid, but probably probably at some point. Yeah, well, I'd imagine if it's if it's okay, we'll probably go for September. Yeah, that'll probably work, won't it? So yeah, uh, start of start trimester is a, a good time, I think. If you're okay with that, Joe. Yeah, yeah that'll be fine. Excellent. So, well, let me share my screen because um, because what I'm going to do today, um, I I about ten minutes ago released um, the latest version of my AI for educators um, newsletter. So um, if you follow this on LinkedIn, um, then you will get it pinging into your email address. If you don't follow it on LinkedIn, um, it's it's if you just look up AI for educators. Um, in fact, I can give you a link. I will do that now. Um, let me, uh, AI newsletter, share URL. There we are. So I, I produce one of these about once a week. Uh, I'll put it in the chat for everybody. There we go. Oh. And, and it's just a five minute normally update on what's going on in the AI space um, from, you know, an education perspective. So there's been a lot of stuff going on in the last three or four days. Um, so just just. You know, if you're not aware of all this stuff, because if you're not reading about AI all the time, you may not be aware of this stuff. But some of it is going to be quite useful from a particularly from an educator's point of view. Um, so the first the first one is Anthropic announced that Claude AI is now out in Europe. Uh, now, Claude is one of the better um, AIs. Um, particularly from an educational perspective, because it's it's always had it's always been built on on ethical principles. That the the two people who started um, Claude um, left OpenAI, which is ChatGPT's creators, um, because they weren't ever so happy about you know the use of data and all the rest of it when um, ChatGPT was being trained. So Claude has always been has been touted as a, as a kind of more ethical AI that doesn't automatically share all the all the data that you put into it in the general training set and stuff like that. It's also always had a much bigger token window, and and that's one of these technical AI terms that is kind of like the the short term memory of the AI. So you can load more material into a chat 
for it to process and think about. So you can, for instance, you can upload PDFs or documents or stuff like that, and then ask for summaries, ask for analyses, ask for, you know, ask questions about the document, that kind of thing. So Claude has always had a big token window. Now, some of the other AIs in, in the current announcements have, have also announced huge increases to that. Um, but, but Claude up until last week wasn't available officially in the EU. Um, you had to you had to access Claude through a VPN. Um, so I, I use Nord VPN, um, just linked to a server in the UK or in the US, and then you were on to Claude. But you don't have to do that anymore. It's now fully available um, in Europe. And it also now is available as a downloadable app. So if you want to go onto your phone store and you, you look for um, Claude, um, Claude 3, then, then it, it downloads as a, as a little app as well now, so you can you can use it on the phone. Okay, so I mean, if you haven't seen Claude, I'll just click on it, um, and here we are. <clears throat> and you can set up, um, you know, a free a free account. Uh, as with all of these, there's a free account which is you know their least powerful model, and then there are paid accounts. Which which give you much more powerful models. Um, this isn't one that I'm currently subscribing to, so I'm not kind of paying for Claude at the moment, um, but I, I'm paying for ChatGPT and I'm paying for Perplexity, um, which actually gives you access to Claude um, as well. Uh, but 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 this is this is Claude. This is what it looks like, and that's the that's the little icon for the app um, on the phone as well. This little kind of I don't know what it is, red teasel thing. Um, you've got a little um, option there, the little paper clip, and you can upload documents or images up to five documents of 10 megabytes each uh, into a chat and then start to kind of interrogate those documents and summarize them and stuff like that. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, but otherwise, it's it's much like any of the other chat uh, chatbots. Uh, I like the way Claude responds. It has a an in, a, a kind of more nuanced voice than ChatGPT. ChatGPT is quite a flat um, delivery, I find. Um, so you know, it's a bit like talking to different people. Talking to these different chatbots gives you gives you a slightly different feeling in terms of you know the text and how it's described. So you, I would encourage everybody to just at least try Claude now because there's no downside to trying it um, and it's free and, and it's generally available. Um, is anybody using Claude? No? Okay. Right. Well then add add this to, add this one to your shortcuts. <laughs> um, because it's uh, it's it's a good one to use. So so I that... actually queried with IT services I think to see uh, if we could use the in-house VPN and yes. the runner. Well, you don't have to now, Mairead. Yeah, that's yeah. great. So that's it. You should just be able to get to it straight away. Um, um, so it should, be, it should be open open access now. So that's Claude. Um, so that's the first thing. So number two is OpenAI. So this is the company behind um, <clears throat> ChatGPT. And they have, on Monday, released a new version of ChatGPT called ChatGPT version 4.0. Zero, uh, four zero, uh, Omni. Okay, so so this is this is ChatGPT four Omni. Okay, and it's giving ChatGPT fully multimodal um, operation. So previously, ChatGPT three point five and four and four Turbo um, processed text, images, and sound differently and what they've done is they've brought all that processing together now so it kind of just processes everything together the result of this common approach to processing means that everything is much faster in chat gpt 4.0 than it was previously so if i fire up chat gpt now <clears throat> you still got to log in and you know all that stuff but once you're in there the, the generation is a good bit quicker um, when you're into doing this stuff. So 
I pay the 20 euro a month to OpenAI to get access to ChatGPT4. Now, you see by default it's 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 generate it's it's taking me into ChatGPT4 there. There's now this new model in the drop down, ChatGPT4 Omni. So it, it won't default to that yet, but you can choose it from the top bar. Okay. So now I can ask it for stuff and you know um, create me a lesson plan introducing, I don't know, stakeholder management to a undergrad class on business. Okay. And you see it's pretty much instant, whereas before we had a few seconds of delay and stuff like that. Okay. Now we're getting, you know, responses much, much quicker. Um, and the responses are, are, are actually somewhat longer as well. Um, so there's a little bit more. Yeah. Now you might be saying, why, why, how come you're getting follow-up questions? Um, in ChatGPT, there is the option down in the um, in the settings next to your name to customize ChatGPT. And you can put in information about yourself and then also information about how you would like ChatGPT respond and one of the things that I've got in here is after a response, provide three follow-up questions. Okay. And I find that, that that's great because it kind of like propels me into a discussion almost with um with Chat GPT. And you know, if I want it to to give me more information about one of these things, so Q2, yeah, I can just say, you know, expand on Q2 for me. Yeah. And now it's looking at the challenges that arise with multiple stakeholders and stuff like that. So this is one of the ways that you get more out of these AI tools. You don't use what we call single shot prompting. Single shot prompting is just ask a question, get an answer, like we've done with Google for years and years and years. Okay, The power of using ChatGPT or any of these other AI bots is that you engage in a dialogue, that you start to explore a subject uh, and delve into it and you know ask ask more questions and 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 stuff and get more information right? it's still not giving us sources by default so i think this is a, this is still something that they're missing yeah if we go over to copilot um which is you know microsoft now copilot back ends into chat gpt and if you open up copilot in edge yeah here we are we've got fast balance or precise yeah they haven't yet turned on a link into gpt4 omni so i would expect that to come fairly soon so you know it's only been two days since they've released omni um at some point the copilot will have a link to omni as well but for now if you're using copilot it's still using chat gpt4 or chat gpt4 turbo it's not actually using the brand new omni model so the only way of getting to that as far as i know at the moment um, this week is is to go to chat gpt itself okay but you know if i ask the same question that we asked chat gpt um create me this lesson plan and we stick that into Copilot. One, it's a little bit slower. That's fine. But what we get when it's given us our lesson plan and stuff is we'll get some sources. Or we normally would get some sources. Let's have a look. It's not giving me any. It's making a liar of me, isn't it? Look at that. Sources. Okay, there we are. So that's giving me a couple of sources to go. I mean, they're not academic sources. You'd, you'd need to kind of go to one of the uh, the, the research engines like Site AI or um, Consensus, um, and that would generate you, you know, a lot of good sources for this stuff. But anyway, it's giving you three 
project management institute asana which is a big project management supplier um, and then float um, i don't know what float is but you can click on it and that would take you into okay so here's a here's an article about creating stakeholder management so it's reasonably credible and stuff um, there we go okay so chat gpt for omni lots of lots of new stuff in there um and there's a whole list in the um in the newsletter of articles about omni and the different capabilities that omni is is now starting to to offer offer us so data analysis has been significantly hyped up in chat gtp for omni so if you're into into data analytics you want to be all over omni um the google announcement that i'll cover in a minute is also significantly better um, from data analytic point of view but one of the things that this multimodal has has started to introduce um if you click on this video of um um khan academy um the guy who started khan academy he's he's sitting with his son um and and they're having a natural conversation with G chat gpt4 omni on on the phone um i'll see whether we can play this through the uh through the zoom let's see hello there i'm here with my son and i love you to tutor him on this math problem but don't give him the answer you can ask questions and nudge him in the right direction but i really want to make sure he understands it himself and he's here in the room so you can talk to him directly of course i'd be happy to help let's look at the problem together can you first i identify which sides of the triangle are the opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse relative to angle alpha? All right, so I'm pretty sure this is the angle alpha right here, right? Perfect. That's correct. Now, looking at the triangle, which side do you think is the hypotenuse? Um, really, I'm, the hypotenuse? I'm not totally sure. I think I think it might be this one, but I really am not sure. This side AC. You're close. Actually, side AC is called the adjacent side to the angle alpha. The hypotenuse. I mean, this is quite a step forward in, you know, kind of interaction to the chatbots that we've seen up to now. The tone of voice, the the you know, the cadence and the flow and stuff like that. Um, you can interrupt now and and you know ask a question halfway through or whatever um the chatbot sounds more like a real person uh, and you know as there seems to be some emotion and, and stuff in in the voice um as well and and the interaction is is kind of pretty much in real time there's little pauses but they're much shorter than they were previously in in, in earlier incarnations so we're seeing you know in in just very quick time a significant advances forward in the interactive usability of these tools. I can't remember, did I show you guys the World Health Organization bot, Maraid? No, I think that that might have come up since the last. I don't think so. I don't recall. So let me let me just show you that. So I, I want to show you World, World Health Organization um sarah here we go uh, bum, bum, bum. right so again on this on this um no it's not that one let's find the link to it here we are and i'll put that in the chat for you as well so you can go have a play with this yourself so the World Health Organization released this about three weeks ago, three, four weeks ago. And this is a, a bot. So you go on to Sarah. OK, now speak to Sarah. OK, now, so she takes a second or two just to just to kind of warm up. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm a digital health promoter and want everyone to live a healthier life. I'm new and I'm still learning, but aim to offer you the best available information. 
The good thing is, I will be updated on a regular basis and constantly be improving. What would you like to talk about? I'm a 60-year-old white Caucasian male who doesn't do enough exercise. Is that a problem? It's essential to stay active at all ages. Regular exercise can help improve overall health and reduce the risk of various conditions. Encouraging him to engage in physical activity could greatly benefit his well-being. How can I support you in encouraging him to incorporate more exercise into his routine? Oh, I'm quite lazy. You know, I don't really like getting outside too much. And it's very cold outside as well, isn't it? So is there any exercise that I could do inside maybe? I understand it can be challenging to exercise outdoors, especially in cold weather. Indoor activities like yoga, bodyweight exercises, or dancing can be great options. They can help you stay active and warm while avoiding the cold. Would you like more information on indoor exercises that you can try? So again, pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> what do you think, right? <laughs> I can see big Sorry, grin. I, I'd prefer not to see her. <laughs> there's, there's still that kind of, it's not right, is it, yet? No, I mean, you know what it reminds me of, actually? Are you familiar with the Articulate Storyline? Yeah. And it's very much like the um, the the avatars. The avatars, yes. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I, I, I that kind of thing just doesn't, just doesn't go down well with me, you know? Yeah. It's, it's not... I mean, it's what do they call it? The valley of disbelief or something, isn't it? At the moment where where they're getting close to looking like regular people, but they're not quite there yet. And there's that that like ooh kind of factor. Yeah. Isn't it? And when I it, think what I found there, you know, like you come across with video editing in particular that or when you're learning something like video editing, that you can get so sucked into the picture that you forget about the audio. You know, especially yeah. if you're trying to get people to tune in. But the, the listener is influenced by everything. They don't necessarily know what's influencing them. So we're being sucked in there initially to, oh, my God, there's a, there's a you know, a, almost a person looking at us. Now the, the AI has a has a body. Body and a face, yeah. But in fact, it is all so much slower and so much more basic than where the where I, AI has gone. But those, I mean, if you ask that kind of question of chat GPT, omni now or claude you'd get a far more sophisticated answer immediately yeah but how long will it take them to back end sarah into omni you know i mean that's probably going to be pretty easy to do back end so so what we're seeing is you know as each of these tech kind of advances leapfrogs previous ones and i mean sarah only came out like three weeks ago yeah, yeah but you can be sure sarah sarah is much further developed than that that's only a taster so we'll be getting you know, better and better versions of Sarah over the next while. But I mean, if you think about that, so she's trained, you know, she's got data sets now for mental health, for uh, physical exercise, for smoking or whatever. And that's an available website that anybody in the world can access and get basic information about these subjects for free. Yeah. Now, from an education perspective, that's democratizing access to information and you can access that on a phone or on a tablet or on a computer or whatever yeah and it's just the first one that's been you know done um in this form but i mean it doesn't take too many leaps forward to see this happening in schools in colleges in education generally yeah um and where does that leave us in five years' time? If you've got a completely believable, human-looking, human-sounding avatar that you can have a conversation with in real time that is indistinguishable from the conversation we're having now, yeah, and that avatar has access to every single textbook and paper ever written about your subject, where does that leave us? Yeah. It's a scary one, isn't it? <laughs> you know, is the pastoral care going to be what we end up left with? Because 
the computer knows our subjects far better than we do. When creativity comes into it, though, it's going to be a much tougher one, isn't it? Yeah. So maybe that's it. Maybe the the leaps of faith and the connections that we you know make as researchers and and as you know kind of creative creatives um, will will continue to give us the edge, or will it? You know, when 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 AGI artificial general intelligence is is achieved, um, and you know a lot of the futurists are saying that's within the next few years, then. Are those connections going to be made better than we can make them? Um, and is creativity just going to be, you know, something that, yeah, we had the edge on up until a while ago, but now the computer can make far better connections than we can. So I think this is this is potentially a game changer for education in general. Um, and I, I mean, we're already seeing different institutions around the world starting to play with this stuff we're seeing news you know newscasters and stuff ai newscasters are, are coming on 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 screen now we're seeing you know youtube influencers who are ais coming in and stuff like that it's not too much of a jump to move that into teachers and lecturers and professors in the classroom um online material becoming just just pervasive um it's i think the education sector is looking at a paradigm shift in the shorter rather than the longer term and that also includes things like universities what does everybody else think in the room <laughs> am i worried you, uh, can i share my idea do yeah yes uh, i think it's really a, a game changer and uh, the flexibility and the uh, knowledge that provides us the online tools and these AI systems is much further and better and more more advanced than uh, us as lecturer. So I said a really game changer, I believe. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, it's moving so fast. You know, just in one week, we've seen like some real leaps forward. Um, how much is you know in a year's time if we're if we're meeting again in a year's time what are we going to be looking back at and, and seeing you know where's the difference um Vimba. all right can you hear me yet yeah. um yeah it's it's a well interesting development to say to say the least of the old Chinese. I guess i'd be worried if <laughs> students were um if they weren't as interested in the grade so i know there's research suggesting that if you offer students the knowledge or the grade they take the, the grade and that's what we do, I guess, is the, um, so it's the grading part that probably will keep us in our jobs. <laughs> Maybe if the grading part stays part of our job, Texas university um, announced a month ago that they are cutting 4,000 of their 6,000 graders. Yeah. And, and putting that into AI. Mm, interesting interesting they're running their assessment yeah. some of their assessments through ai and they had six thousand people contracted to do student grading and they've cut, cut four thousand of them and and then the ai grading will be reviewed by a human but you know it will primarily have been done by ai and i mean it's it's easy to do this stuff now i mean if you come up with a, a you know a written brief and you come up with a rubric for these are the things I'm assessing on and these are the things I'm looking at. You can feed a brief and a rubric into Claude now or into ChatGPT or any of the, the Google AIs and then say, okay, here's the assignment brief. Here's my grading structure. Now read this PDF and grade it for me and give me critical comments and give me some encouragement and, and whatever that I can give to the student and it'll spit out a really good kind of analysis and page of information um you know you tweak that a few times to get it right and you've just saved yourself three weeks of work <laughs> yeah you... yeah well then it sounds like we'll move towards providing the soft skills yes so you know the ability to interact with others in a work environment and knowledge of how to deal with 
free riders, etc., in a in a work situation, that perhaps we'll move away from the knowledge to all those other things. Basically, the you know the education part of university is personally, well, this is my own opinion, quite a minor part. It's all those other things that you learn and get from yeah. the university environment that are, well, I would think essential. And if we yeah. lose them, we lose a, a huge amount. Yeah. And particularly at undergrad. I'm not I'm not convinced about postgrad. Um I would disagree, but <laughs> well, that's interesting. Yeah. Because I mean I've moved one of my master's programs from in person to online this year, following student requests, following and, and we tested it as a hybrid for one year, and, and two people out of twenty showed up for, for classes. Everybody else came in online and said they preferred online because they didn't want to come into college after a, a day's, you know, working and, and sit in a classroom. Uh, they, they much preferred it. So I don't know. I don't know whether the social aspect is something that people at postgrad are that concerned about. They, they tend to be more concerned about, right, let, let's, let me do the work, but do it in my own time, in my own space. Um, sorry, sorry, Joe, just to clarify, that cohort were people working and taking your program by night, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. that sounds right for that cohort, but not, not for a full-time cohort, I would imagine. Yeah. yeah, and certainly the younger, you know, the younger students who just are doing the one-year full-time course, that there is a, there's definitely a social aspect to that for them as well. But the part-timers who are doing it, you know, two or three evenings, you know, a couple of evenings a week for a couple of hours, um, yeah, they're they're much more transactional in that in that aspect um, from what I'm seeing. Um, certainly in the business school, it might be different in history or music or you know, sociology or whatever. Um, I don't know. What, do you, what does everybody else think? Yeah. Anyone else? Mairead, what you were you you popped your mic at one point there. Did you did something? No, I was I was I was thinking back. It was, it was more this this step before because stuff that's cropping up in the podcast that we're currently working on and getting students' views on how marking and grading should be going is actually quite interesting. But maybe we'll save that for when we launch. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, that does. Yeah, interesting to hear. What students when they put when they put their heads down are actually thinking about, you know, what they're confessing they're frightened of, and also what they where they think lecturers could go. Mm. You know? I th I think you know that should be part of our next discussion that that you and Jen should come on and maybe even bring one of the students on and kind of let's let's get some of that thrown out. I think that well, would be. In fact, if we do September, we hope to launch in September. So be... um, yeah. I'm planning the trailer right now. So hopefully the trailer will go up exactly at that point in time. Um, so we'll be much more familiar with everything that's been. Yeah. And it'd be a really interesting discussion to get their student voice in as well. Um, yeah. What we what we generally kind of chat about in these sessions. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's yeah, we'll definitely keep an eye on that uh, because I think. It's going to be the aim for the well, my aim behind it anyway, is that while it's going to be should be very, very valuable for students and for parents, it should also be extremely val valuable for academics. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, and it's it's, you know, students may feel safe to, in terms of voicing their their opinions and their feelings. So um, all good yeah. so far. I'll have, and I'll have a new podcast out with a few episodes up by that time as well on AI, UDL and um, um, kind of inclusion and accessibility. Um, so I'm doing that with a couple of Australian colleagues who have just started that. So, so right. we've got lots of new stuff for you in all in September. Yeah, um, and UCD Teaching and Learning actually have, um, they have a little podcast out at the moment. It's It's just reach the final episode with the students and the students on AI whereas ours will be students on AI and assessment it'll be much more narrow um, mm. and I think there might be room down the, the road for us to maybe amalgamate if these are all yeah. versions and are not uh, doubling up on each other I think there might be you know there might be room to do something like that uh, yeah great well maybe maybe share those links out with everybody as well Mairead because uh I'm sure some people will be interested in taking a listen to some of those. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, sorry, the link's in the chat? Yeah, well, either in the chat or an email afterwards. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, no, your link's in the chat. I can do that when I'm distributing the video, yeah. Super. Okay, all right. Um, let me just share again. So, 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 so that was Anthropic with Claude. That was um, OpenAI with um, ChatGPT, um, Omni. Um, yes, did, did, no, did Monday. Uh, we're Wednesday now, aren't we? Yeah. So, so all, all this news dropped yesterday, but it was on Monday. Um, they had the I/O Developers Conference. Google had the I/O Developers Conference. Um, the whole slew of announcements came out of this conference. I mean, you know, Google are a huge company, and they've got many, many tools and techniques and and stuff like that. Um, there's a two-hour keynote. If you if you want to sit through that, or if if you read the newsletter here, um, that they also released a ten minute kind of summary of just the highlights or all the things that they've announced. Um, but you know, Gmail's going to get AI in it, um, and and all the the, the workspace, um, G, you know, Google workspaces are going to going to get that. Um, both Open AI with with Omni. And, and also Google are now bringing in products where you can use your phone camera. So when you basically, you know, turn it into video mode and you're walking around with the camera, yeah, the, the camera is scanning the room as you're moving it around, okay? And you can now, with both of these new models, you will be able to talk to, you know, the chat GPT or, or, or the Google version of that, um, and ask it questions about your surroundings. Um, one of the videos, you know, the, the the lady was walking around her kitchen and her living room and stuff, and then she said to 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 the phone, um, "Can you remember where I left my glasses?" Yeah, and and it came back and said, "Yeah, they're on the table next to the red apple." Yeah. <laughs> so it had actually recognised the scene. Yeah identified every single object in the scene, knew where it was in context and all the rest of it. And in real time was having a conversation with this woman and letting her know where her, her glasses were left and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's just, it's just changing the game on the way that these, these AIs can take information in and also represent that information back to us. Well, I guess we got a taste of that, didn't we? With, you know, was my phone listening to me? You know, yeah. that would have been the start of that. And now we maybe look at the burglars out there that can tap into what's in your home hidden where <laughs> where you left it down last. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, home security. I mean, I've got an Alexa sitting looking at me just here. Yeah. Now, the the Amazon Alexas have a little thing that you can slide across the camera. Yeah. But, you know, I've actually got three cam four cameras in in within three feet of me okay i've got my webcam that you're looking that i'm looking at you through i've got my facetime camera on the top of my laptop screen i've got my phone pointing at me which has obviously got a camera on it and i've got the alexa yeah so we're, we're starting to get cameras in so many areas of our lives um and if somebody can hack into those and apply an ai to them and scan your room, whether you know it or not. <laughs> I mean, there's all kinds of scary things going on there, aren't there? Um, quite apart from the listening aspect. And I mean, you know, when we, we've we had conversations over lunch and then an hour later, I'm starting to get ads popping up on my phone for whatever we were talking about over lunch because Alexa's sitting there listening all the time. You think, yeah, you think of the... You know, the camera bells. I mean, yeah. I queried this when I was putting, installing a UFI. So where where the actual memory if, is actually. Um, local. The, yeah. yeah. So if it is local, is it a chip actually in the camera? So if they whack that off the wall, can they can they get into the chip, you know? So it's um, it's very close. Yeah. There's all, all kinds of stuff going on. So so the 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 acceleration of the capabilities of this stuff and and how we can leverage this I, I suppose for education is going to be really interesting i mean can you imagine you know going out on a, a woodland walk or whatever you know with a with a class discussing nature or agriculture or whatever it is and you you kind of you know you've you've got your 
camera and you're scanning, I don't know, the trees or the wildlife or the hedgerows or whatever it is. And it's it's allowing you to identify stuff on the fly. Yeah. I did that the other day. Um, I, Penny was saying like, I wish I knew what this tree was. I got my phone out, fired up ChatGPT, took a photo of it and said, ask ChatGPT, what's this tree? Yeah. And it said, oh, this is an ash. Yeah. yeah. Because it recognized the leaves and the tree and all the rest of it. So you could already do this stuff. The pattern recognition is already built into these AIs, but now it's in real time and it's through video as well as stills. Yeah, uh, and this was previously with the likes of there are apps there for plant identification, but a lot of them are paid if they're the good ones. So and they would be very much standalone. But one of the areas in um, education that I hear basically people having problems with is um, field trips. Yeah. Because actually videoing a field trip or trying to record the experience of taking students on a day out on be it an architecture, be it be it whatever. And. Mm -hmm. um, it is actually quite difficult to get to get the footage that you need yeah. to bring to to whittle down um you know to edit down really for and make it a useful class class video and it opens up amazing horizons there and would make the editing very easy because it's telling you what to cut out and you maybe don't even have to take them out on a field trip every time now you know maybe you have access to something i mean you know, Newgrange at the solstice or something like that. So let's say you get one of the tickets to go into Newgrange at the solstice. So you take in your little 360 degree camera and you go in to the center of Newgrange as the sun's rising and it's capturing that whole thing in 3D, you know, as you're holding your camera or the rest of it. And, and now you can just save that footage and the AI will pass that and will understand and you can look at you know, the, the footage and say, well, what do these Ogham instructions mean um, that are carved in the wall of Newgrange? And, you know, tell me about the declination of the sun and, you know, tell the students and the students can ask these questions and stuff like that. I mean, the, the, the possibilities for changing educational experiences now. Well, it's allowing you as the lecturer in that situation to actually completely customise and tailor a lesson by one trip on your own without taking out. And then presumably when you do deliver that or make it available, the students can interact with it and ask AI what, so what they didn't understand or to elaborate on or take them off to, oh my God, we're getting carried away here. <laughs> well, I mean, we, we, we are, but we're not because these are possibilities that are now starting to become realities. Yeah. We're, we're only starting to even think about these possibilities because we're starting to see the technology give these possibilities. And we're getting over the shock, the initial shock and the fear. So so I think in some ways we've got lovely golden opportunity time coming up where if we're willing to embrace some of the use of this technology, we've got the possibility of transforming the learning environments that we, we use. You know, maybe PowerPoint is dead. Yeah. <laughs> anybody, anybody got any thoughts on that? <laughs> I mean, I, I very rarely now use PowerPoint for putting new talks and seminars and sessions together. Um, I've, I've moved over to things like Notion um, and stuff that allow me to tweak things on the fly and share information in, in different ways. Um, so thoughts from the room. Come on, don't make it about me and Maraid all the time. Um, are you guys using this stuff? Is this sparking any thoughts, any ideas? Uh, Hi, Joe. Have you tried the, the Oscopus uh, artificial intelligence? Does it give you an edge? I haven't tried Scopus, no. Um, I've tried Over chat GTP or is it worth it? Yeah, I mean, I've I, I, I've looked at a few of the research tools. Um, Site um, SCITE is is one of the better ones for for surfacing, you know, research and following citations and giving you the network of, of linked papers and things. Um, Consensus is another very good tool. Elicit is another one. Um, Ethan Mollick has produced um, a, a kind of research tool 
which is getting quite a lot of traction as well. And I mean, he's a professor over in, in the States um, and has done a lot of work on AI. So, you know, it's worth looking at his his stuff as well. So, yeah, I mean, I, I if I was kind of, you know, writing my PhD now or a master's thesis or something, I would be all over these AI tools because they will save hours and hours, if not weeks and weeks of, of research time. They will get you to research quicker than you've ever been able to get to it before. And then obviously it's a matter of you choosing what's the most relevant research and, you know, passing it and, and whatever. But accessing that stuff now, yeah, the AI tools that will definitely give you a huge edge um, over not using. Yeah. Hey, uh, thanks, Ho. I have a question uh, just I wondered uh, what's the best uh, AI tool for uh, providing introductions for a paper. You know, when we want to just develop a paper, first we have to have an introduction, just uh, uh, providing the previous background at that field. So what's your suggestion? Uh, what's the best uh, AI tool for this purpose? Thank you. I, would, I would have a look at Jenny, J-E-N-N-I. Okay, I'll put it in the chat. Um, but but Jenny AI is 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 one of the better tools for kind of writing and helping you write, you know, particular sections or paragraphs, something like that. Um, so that would be one to go and look at. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank. No problem. No problem at all. So. Am I sharing? I am sharing, aren't I? So the, so the Google stuff, um, so that, that's the Google AI in 10 minutes. And then I came across this about an hour ago. Um, this was on LinkedIn. Darren Coxon kind of pointed this out. Um, and, and Google has a thing called AI Studio. So if we bring AI Studio up, yeah, here it is. Um, and this gives you access to their very latest Gemini 1.5 Flash on pro previews. So these are the biggest, fastest Gemini models at the moment, and you can access them for free by going to the Google AI Studio. Yeah, um, the token window, I think in AI Studio, I think is a million, which is like 10 times bigger than anything else. I mean, you can load up a 1500 page PDF in a, a token window of a million. So, um, having a play with these. And this is now available in the EU um, as well. So um, pretty, pretty amazing um, playground to, to try stuff in. Uh, now, whether this stays being free or not, I don't know. The conference only happened on Monday and they've made this available straight away. Um, so, but you can try stuff in here um, and, you know, have a play. Um, and I would, I would try that. Um, look at this, my library. So, you know, if you have a Google library, um, Google Drive here, you can set up access to your Google Drive and give it access to the material in your Google Drive. Um, and then, you know, you, you've got the start of something very powerful in terms of giving AI access to a wider data set um, and, and coming in. Okay. Now, I only loaded this up an hour ago. I haven't even had time to play with it yet. Um, but uh, but it certainly looks like something that is going to be very interesting to to look at and play with. Okay. But Joe, question: If you um, give it access to the likes of your Google Drive, is your material then unprotected? Pretty much. I don't know. I haven't had time to look yet. That's something we'd really have to be careful about, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, you, you certainly need to kind of be asking those questions and having a look. Um, but uh, yeah, look, multimodal input, text, audio, and video allows for further fine tuning and has hands down the best data analytics function of any AI I've used, all free of charge. This is this is Darren Coxon um, writing. So um, having, a, having a look at that might be worth investing a little bit of time in. And then Donald Clark dropped this, uh, Google dropped this paper, 75 authors of this paper, um, Boom, boom, boom. Yes. Come on. Um, so th this is a paper that looks at um, towards responsible development of generative AI for education and evaluation driven approach. So it's starting, you know, we're starting to now see some research coming out about use of AI, gen AI in 
education um, that is kind of peer reviewed, you know, and and stuff. So there we are. That's a that's a paper to look at um, that that might have some some interesting stuff in it as well. Um, again, I, I only found this an hour ago, so you're getting this hot off my press as well. Um, so I haven't had time to evaluate it myself. Um, but uh, hopefully it's it's given you some ideas anyway um, today. So uh, so there we go. That's what I had to share with you today. Um, yeah. Fascinating. So how how big a leap is going to happen between now and September, do you think? Oh, huge. I mean, because all the stuff that, that has been announced, you know, by Google today, a lot of that will be in play by September. Mm. Um. Microsoft have got big announcements coming next week. Mm. So, you know, it's just like leapfrog, leapfrog, leapfrog. Um, so we're going, to see, we're going to see big changes in the next three months. Yeah. That doesn't mean education is going to all just change in September. No, because we're not. We're not capable of changing that fast. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think the possibilities are now opening up for us to change if yeah. we want to and to leverage these different possibilities. But I suspect in September, 99.99% .99 of all lectures will be delivered the same way they were in January. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I imagine assessment is the one key thing that is going to have to, going to be forced to move ahead and change. Well, I mean, I've changed my assessment strategies. I've, I've moved away from anything that, you know, could be just straight written by an AI. I've moved, I mean, I've been using problem-based learning and project-based assessments and stuff like that for, for years now anyway. Mm -hmm. But I think a move towards that kind of stuff, towards personalised input, um, critique, rather than just regurgitation of facts and figures and knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, is is where we've got to go. You know? yeah. Yeah. Um, excuse me, I have a question if I have time for that. We do, yeah. Uh, I want to know how these AI tools judge about uh, what's the true answer for the question. Because, you know, for instance, for a, a scientific approach, we are several scientific approaches for a simple problem. So how do they judge about which of them is the best and they provide us with the best solution? So, I mean, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not a database, uh, an AI database expert, but from what I've read, that's that these gen i gen ai tools are looking they're, they're based on predictive models so how do they judge they don't judge like we judge they they kind of basically saying well what's the next most likely word <laughs> yeah what's the most likely thing so i suspect that if there were two or three competing theories in a field yes one of them is probably you know, getting more write-ups and more traction than the others. I suspect based one, on citations or maybe other measures on citations or by volume or whatever. Yeah, and I mean, you know, this is this is interesting. But then, you know, one of them the the will be the predictive model will pick up and say, well, this one seems to be more likely than the others, so it would do. But this is where we still have to. This is where demand knowledge comes in still, that the AIs will tell us something. And it looks real and it sounds real, but we've still got to process that through. Is it real or is it a hallucination? And I think that's where we can still add some value. Now, in five years' time, will it will AI still be giving that problem, you know, having that problem, or will it be so good by that time that it does always give us the right answer? Don't know. Today we're still needed to produce to to kind of do that reality check yeah yes maybe the models of prediction and maybe uh, perceived just uh, ideas behind these uh, manipulations much must be much more accurate and realistic otherwise they will just give some maybe wrong solutions but i mean as as sam altman who you know is the ceo of open ai said this week he said all the models of ai that you're using today are the worst models you will ever use. Yeah. And even the magic that we're seeing today, I mean, that's the worst it's ever going to be. It's just going to get better and faster. Yes, of course, it should be. Oh, Thank you.
it is going to look a bit like Skynet, isn't it, Arturo? I quite agree with you. <laughs> uh, right. Thank you. Thank you. So, I hope that was an interesting, uh, an interesting little hour interlude for everybody. And uh, we will see you all in September. And uh, who knows what the world will look like then? Yeah, well, maybe Skynet will have come. <laughs> I'll be back. It was great, Joe. Really interesting as usual. Thanks a million. Yeah. Um, and thanks Thank everybody for coming along. And yeah, I suppose we're close on time now as well. So I suppose we just leave it and re pick, we'll pick a date behind the scenes, Joe, and go for it in September. Yeah, yeah that sounds great.